My name is John Brinton Hogan, and this is my medium photo virtual studio visit. Much of my recent work consists of unique mixed media objects based on original photographs I've made in the field. This combination of photography, digital art, and painting requires specific physical spaces for effectively managing productivity and inventory. Fortunately, I've got three spaces, which together meet the need. The first, located in my house, serves as both my business office and my digital production suite. Over the past half decade, I have been looking at the human form as it inhabits a landscape. Each piece begins by digitally distorting a photograph I have made. Using a tablet and a stylus, I transform the human components in the pictures into silhouettes. Next comes the printing, done on this large Epson. I used to use this Howtech drum scanner quite a bit. Once the printer has finished its job, the next phase of work begins, which involves hand embellishing the print. A major theme in this body of work involves imagining the world after we vanished. Attempting to process dire environmental projections, I revisited things that frightened me as a child science fiction illustrations, spooky album covers, and scary movies. A few years ago, as the scale of my work grew more ambitious, it became clear to me that I'd need more room to perform the hand work. Luckily, I found a suitable space in a former warehouse close to my home. Upon moving in, I did my best to design the main space to serve as a gallery, in addition to being a workshop. All fixtures are either portable or on wheels so they can be moved quickly. I created an ad hoc gallery style lighting system using clip fixtures attached to a PVC grid hung from the ceiling. This space is also a comfortable place to meet with collectors, curators, and collaborators. Some years back, I found myself unfulfilled by the straight photography I'd made up until then. I yearned for some sort of physical engagement with my art. It was then I began the experiments that would change the way I'd work in the future. Like a lot of artists, my studio is sort of a sanctuary, and I look forward to going there as much as I can. Making these objects involves concentrating for long periods of time, repeating the same movements and gestures, which I find to be calming perhaps in the same way religious people find prayers. Some of the tools I use aren't what you'd normally expect to find in the typical photographer's studio. The objects I'm making are incredibly fragile, and from time to time I screw something up that can't be saved. As each piece requires many hours to create, I've taken to salvaging the bits that might be used in some future context after the tears have dried. I use a mix of traditional artists' media, automotive or sign painter supplies, and crafting stuff. I am affected by a form of synesthesia, so colors are extremely important to me. By combining the various elements, I create deliciously flavored concoctions. Having no formal art training, my practice is fundamentally shaped by my own investigation and experience. This is the case both intellectually and from a practical, physical standpoint. Powders, leaf, and loose glitter have a tendency to get all over the place so I created a special mobile vacuum system. 
The hose comes from above, so it won't accidentally scratch the face of a print. It was inspired by a visit to the dentist. The glitter crusts on this piece took many, many repetitive steps. Paint, block, dry, vacuum, and repeat. I use a physician's inspection lamp with a good lens to get a clear view of the details as I apply media. It's on wheels too, so it moves easily. This table has a self-healing mat for cutting. The inventory storage is in the adjacent room. A finished object is first photographed while still stretched on a rigid substrate to keep it flat. Edges are trimmed on an 84 inch table mounted rotary cutter. Having such a tool is a luxury. Each finished piece gets its own custom protective clamshell folder to keep it safe during shipping and storage. This aspect of the work isn't always appreciated when it's on the wall, but represents a significant investment in time. Typically, there are over 80 objects in the inventory, with some being quite large. Studio visitors can browse the inventory on iPads to choose those objects they'd like to see in person. This saves time and lessens the likelihood of damage to the work. This 3M tape dispenser is worth its weight in gold. The rotary trimming table has storage underneath and doubles as a solid surface for other tasks such as applying Japanese hinges. Another tool for magnification, just in case it's needed. I hope you found this little tour of my studio spaces to be interesting and entertaining. It's an honor for me to have had a few moments to share it with you and I'd like to express my thanks to the staff of Medium Photo for the opportunity. Most of all, thank you for your time.